The COVID-19 crisis has cast a new light on many of our conversations about technology. And asking the right questions is even more important as getting the right answers. Did AI fail to warn us of the crisis? Will we be able to innovate our way out? Why and why not? Is this pandemic a warning about other apocalyptic scenarios like a nuclear one? And what ways will the COVID-19 crisis affect how we work on life once the virus is gone? Here is my vision in response to these questions about what we will learn and how to respond. The failures of our technology is our human failure. This comes in different flavors, however. It can be the failure to manage our expectations, letting hype and lack of understanding give us a false sense of our technology's capability. People are often generally surprised by how helpless we still are against the natural world or things like industrial accidents. A volcano can bring Europe to a standstill. A virus can do it to the entire planet. It can also be a failure of vision due to how myopically we employ our technology. How much AI development is dedicated to threat detection compared to, say, customer service or video games? Our priorities rarely include fat tail events like these catastrophes because we're too focused on short-term risk reward. Now we might see the employment of a global AI virus warning system. But then comes the next problem. Will we listen to it? Our weather forecasts are very accurate these days, but people still get caught in the rain all the time. There is always a limit to how much we can innovate. But I'm an optimist and an accelerationist. We need to push harder, to go further, faster, in part so, we are better prepared for the next crisis. Every new breakthrough causes disruption and problems. It is true. And those problems are only solved by the next breakthrough. That is how we advance. That is progress. New technology is the main reason we are still alive to complain about new technology. As for specialization, while it's essential for increasingly complex fields for people to specialize. There is a lot more to know today than in the day of Newton or even 30 years ago. Specialization also has downsides. Great innovation often comes from people who are looking at things differently. People who are combined expertise and ask new questions. Specialists tend to focus on optimizing existing tech. That is important and necessary. But optimization can be the enemy of innovation. The biggest barriers to innovation today are all aspects of one thing, a lack of risk taking. We have spent decades trying to mitigate risk, to control it, to eliminate it by mathematical trickery and science that is driven by benchmarks and grant applications. But if you know how long something is going to take and how much it is going to cost, it is already obsolete. There are far more people with more access to more powerful technology today. So where is the innovation boom? Where is the funding for blue sky projects that are difficult and risky? Where is the attitude that there is no reward without risk? Instead, companies that put more money into R&D are punished by the stock market. Even venture capitalists shortening its windows, demanding returns quicker. Innovation requires freedom, and that includes freedom to fail while shooting for the stars. But today, we are staring at our screens, not looking at the stars. We dream about making a killer app for the iPhone 11 instead of the next Apollo 11. The ability to destroy always comes before the ability to good with new technology. From gunpowder to nuclear power, the weapons came first. 
The internet is another example, and we're still figuring out how to prevent the damage it may be doing to our society, even while we certainly couldn't live without it. But we do learn eventually. We establish norms, write laws, figure out a balance to use technology to improve our lives. Think about it. Is there a single technology you would abolish in order to make the world a better place? I think there is the near zero chance of a nuclear apocalypse today. The authoritarian regimes that possess this ability use nuclear weapons like they do everything else for leverage to expand their power and their wealth. Cynical opportunists are not doomsday cultists. The greater danger is the lack of global cooperation, indicated by the shaky state of the EU and the lack of US leadership. This makes a rogue nuke scenario more likely. Global institutions have their problems, but nuclear proliferation shouldn't be one of them. Crises don't usually create new trends. They accelerate existing ones. Work from home, for example, was already a trend. Artificial intelligence was still talked about like sci-fi. But wouldn't we all like to have self-driving cars? and robots in hospitals during the pandemic instead of humans? We acted like we had all the time in the world to figure it out. But as often happens, events catch up with us when we slow down. Instead of all the hysteria about robot terminators and mass unemployment, we should have been investing heavily. Now we have mass unemployment. Without AI, without the robots, and without the promising new tech. The good news is that necessity is the mother of invention. Wars are often a catalyst, but of course no one would want a war just to spur innovation. Now we have a virus reshaping our lives, and we will see a burst of innovation in response. I hope this also serves as a wake-up call that there is no time to waste. Our response should not be to slow down, to be careful, but to speed up, to take chances, to create the tech we need to master our environment. Going too slowly is what got us here, with hobbled vaccine industry and AI for video games instead of daily life. We don't want to go back to the status quo that got us here. Let's do better. Let's take it as a call to action to make every moment of our lives count.